Well, first of all, welcome to Toronto. I'm so glad oh. that you guys were able to come here to talk about the film. This is unbelievable. Um, and really, I've always said about stop animation that you have to have the patience of saints. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> next, next question. <laughs> that, yeah. Patience of saints is a very nice way of putting it. Some people just think we're mad OCD it's, losers. Yeah. You know? It's but, definitely yeah. a certain type of person. Yeah. Um, I think you have to be really passionate about it because it is a slow, painstaking, painful process. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, frustrating though. It it's can be, be, yeah, it is. It is. It is a grind, but it's all planned out. I mean, the, these people have been doing this a long time, like most of them, you know. Mm. So it's a bit like playing an instrument, in truth, you know. Like they're, they're talented at that, you know. So when you start learning the piano, yeah, it's frustrating. But some of these people are so good at this thing now that they're, right. they're, they're, they're the top of the game. So and it's less frustrating working yeah, with those and, people. Yeah, and surprisingly, uh, well, not surprisingly. I mean, for working on Coraline and seeing what you know, Leica was capable of doing, I think it was the opposite of frustrating because the things that used to frustrate you in this medium that you couldn't do, right. suddenly we were able to do. Mm. Um, or even things that haven't been proven, you know, you, we shouldn't be able to do this, but we'll find a way to, to, to try, you know? Yeah, well, I was going to ask you that because it's been, you know, a few years since Coraline, and mm. that was when I, when I saw that, I went, wow, this is so cool. Yeah. But now, You've got so many years ahead. Yeah. What was the yeah. you know the biggest obstacle that you were able to overcome Sco using this? scope, scope and scale? Yeah, it's mm. just a bigger movie. We wanted we wanted it to be a big screen experience, you know, and take you on a roller coaster ride. Uh, so we could, wanted to create a whole town, you know, so we could boom up with our camera and just reveal the whole of Blythe Hollow and beyond. We wanted crowds. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's a you, there's a whole list actually, you know, of, of and innovation. It, and, and it's two extremes because we've got the scope and scale mm. on that side. But the other thing that I think we were able to achieve here, again, because of technological advances, was a, a subtlety and a nuance of performance that up until now was incredibly difficult in mm. this medium. Mm. Um, and you know, like the replacement face technology, that alone enabled us to do, you know, the kind of acting that you normally only see in live action movies, partly because of the way we shot it, we could get in really close on a character, um, but also this subtlety of movement that mm -hmm. we're able to achieve now. Um, you know, we have shots of characters just listening to other people talk. Yeah. Which is unusual. It's unusual, yeah. You know, and, and you're actually, what we aim to do is that you see a character on screen and you buy that they're real. Exactly. You know, yeah. that's what we're all aiming to do in animation. Well, how did the story come about? Because, you know, Norman, I, I think everybody can relate to yeah. Norman. And mm. I honestly, guys, didn't think I'd need some Kleenex in this film. Oh, yeah, awesome. it's got a heart, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Really goes, go for it. Where yeah. did this come from in your head? There's, a, there's, there's, <laughs> de there's definitely a lot of me in Norman. I think you're right. It's, um, you know, people say, oh, is Norman you? And yeah, to a certain extent he is. I was an outsider, I didn't fit in. Um, but I think you're right. I think when you're 11 or round about that age, mm. everyone knows what it's like to not know how you fit into the world. Um, and that's that goes the same for whether you're a weird kid who sees ghosts or whether you're the popular kid. Yeah. You know, we're not all perfect. And I, that's what I like playing with here was like, we all have ideas of what a cheerleader is or what the weird kid who lives down the road is or what a bully is. But actually it's a lot more complicated than that. And, and I think what we all have in common is that that, you know, trying to find our place in the world. Yeah, and you pick some amazing people to voice this mm. film. My goodness, yeah. you know. Uh, Anna Kendrick, I mean, really, like, and a lot of people who've never done voiceover. Yeah, yeah Anna. So I think you were all kind of learning together, I would think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and we got them to, get, to work together. I mean, neither Anna nor Casey had done this kind of work before. Uh, and it was great fun because we actually got them together in the booth and. They, a, they were finding out how to do this thing in the first place, but just having each other was good because they it was a little competitive, mm. you know. Like so, they would, each of them would go a little bit further, and uh, and they were. It was just great to put them together. It was playful, uh, playful, yeah. And that came across, I think. Uh, another example, you know, with the with the kids was we got them to, you know, the the scene with the stick in the garden. Yeah. And that that was lovely because we got them to ad lib, but it wasn't it wasn't to find like perfectly honed. Um, gags. It wasn't to, to, for them to impress mm. with their ad-libbing skills. It was actually to get a kind of naturalism that felt genuine. So, you know, when kids talk to each other, they do step on each other's lines. They do stammer and stutter and say the wrong words. And so to try and ca capture that with the two of them 
and succeed and then to animate to that it just brought a whole new level to it, to the movie yeah did Anna enjoy her curves in this film <laughs> yeah. I don't think any of our <laughs> actors enjoyed their curves in this film but I think you know it was important that we, you know we did we were doing this telling this story from an 11 year old's point of view right. and um, when you're 11 the whole world is made up of butts and bellies <laughs> so it was it was kind of important to our design sensibility again we're going for naturalism yeah well you probably could have modeled her over my butt but anyway <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you? Where do you go from here? How do you even advance? You know, in the next one. <laughs> well, who knows? I mean, we we just finishing this one really, yeah. so yeah. it's like this is the see newest. How tired we yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. I see. Well, you've been doing a lot of press. Too, yeah. So come on, really. This is, but I think this is the newest and most wonderful and amazing version of this medium now. Yeah. This, this movie is, I think, right now we're right on the cutting edge. You know, yeah. we scratch the surface on some technical things that yeah. are kind of mind blowing. Yeah. That someone else will it's probably It's funny, use. every week there's something where you're like, huh, Ooh. I wonder if we could, and you just can't yet, right. yeah. but soon. And I think that's, there's always gonna be something that's innovating, there's always gonna be something that allows you to open this world up a little bit more. Yeah, mm. but it, keep the handmade, you know, yeah. keep that handmade quality, because in the end that's the magic. Yeah, and how hard is it to, you know, not only just engage kids, but you wanna make parents happy too. You wanna be able to have, you know, families go to this and, yeah. and parents not going, oh my God, I have to sit two hours. Yeah. I found this engaging for, you know, I think anybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a true family movie. Yeah, yeah. and I, and I the think idea. the key is to be, again, it's, it's about being genuine. I don't like movies that, that are condescending. I don't like sensing an adult voice in a kid's movie. Mm. Um, and if you are, if you try to be true to, like if your character's 11 years old and you try to remember what it was like to be 11, if you strip away those years of maturity, then, then you're, be, you're being honest. And it's the same with the adult characters as well. I think all these characters are true to themselves. They're, they're, even though they are broad caricatures at times, um, there's something real in them and that a kid and an adult can identify with that immediately. Absolutely. Well, I, I thank you for not making them vampires because I think zombies yeah. are the new... The, They're much the cooler, new, yeah. What can you... Can, you know, it's like vampires. vampires. It's like they can wear, you know, blousy shirts and <laughs> glow in the day. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Really like, wow, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I just was on a set and I was a vamp... I was a, a, sorry, a zombie for um, a film that's coming out. Oh, cool. Oh, and well, it was yeah. the best experience of my life. That was one of my bucket list things. Is I have to be... as you know, is awesome. Can I ask? The it is the coolest. I'll show you the picture. Did you shamble? Uh, no. What is shambling? No, I did, was we're... not told to shamble. Can oh you my gosh. Were, they, were they slow zombies or did they run? No, they were slow. Oh, good. Well, I, okay. I did practice. Well, that's a shamble. Just okay, shuffle. Shuffle. You were a shuffle. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, zombies are cool. I agree with you on that. So that's great. But congratulations on this. It's a wonderful film. Thank you. And best thanks. of luck. And hopefully we'll be talking to you for the next one. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thanks, yeah. guys. Thank nice you. meeting you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thanks.